Greetings, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I am Father Rick Anthony Reyes, OSA. I am an Augustinian priest presently assigned at Basilica Minore del Santo Niño de Cebu in Cebu City. I am tasked today to give you some valuable inputs about St. Augustine and the Augustinian spirituality. In this presentation, I will share and try to discuss comprehensively as possible the works which are the writings of St. Augustine. And from these writings, some important theological reflections and thoughts he contributed to the development of the church doctrinal teachings. So we will begin with some preconditions. When we are talking about the works of St. Augustine, our Holy Father, we primarily notice the huge impression of its size. St. Augustine indeed wrote and dictated voluminous works. Our Pope Emeritus, Pope Benedict XVI, who is known as a lover of St. Augustine, remark, he said, and I quote, Like various fathers of the Church in the first centuries, but on an incomparable larger scale, the Bishop of Hippo, in fact, exercised an extensive and persistent influence as already appears from the superabundant manuscripts, transcriptions of his works, which are indeed extremely numerous. Saint Posidius of Calama, disciple of Saint Augustine and member of the first African cleric community, and eventually he himself became a bishop, contributed his first attempt to make a very comprehensive indiculus or what we call the list of the writings of St. Augustine. In him, we can find assurance that St. Augustine's works are numbered and named in that indiculus. He said, The list of St. Augustine's works was drafted with explicit intention of keeping their memory through all Roman Africa and it included at least 1,030 writings numbered by their author. With others that, there are still others, others that cannot be numbered because he did not give them any number. That what was uh, the report of a Saint Posidius of Calama. The surprising feature of Augustinology, this is a branch of patristic studies and even of patrology, which focuses more on the writings of St. Augustine and his teachings, is that even though the list of his works is nonetheless definitive, there were still recently new discoveries of some unknown writings of this great saint, which had been shelved for a long time in some great libraries and archives in Europe. Uh, notable mentions here, are first the sermones or the homiletic uh, works of St. Augustine, the sermons of St. Augustine, Augustine. Recent finds include the discovery of 26 sermons at the Municipal Library of Maguncia in Germany in 1996. It was discovered by a certain Elf Dolbu. And in 2008, another six sermons were discovered in the library of the University of Erfurt in Germany. Just by dealing only with his sermons, we are just talking with his sermons and not some other writings yet. There had been 8,000 sermons that St. Augustine had preached, but only up to or more than 600 have survived to this day. So in the original eight more or less 8,000 sermons of St. Augustine, we have only in the present day 600 plus of his works. So imagine that. After we take note of this hugeness or greatness of his writings in base on number, we have also to understand that despite these works are titled and more or less focusing on themes, we cannot make an absolute conclusion as St. Augustine in one of his works could write and comment on more than one theme in relation to the main topic. 
This is because St. Augustine wrote mostly in response to the controversy of his time or he maybe have or may have responded to a specific correspondence who asked him more than one question in one topic and more than one topic in some correspondences. Unlike St. Thomas Aquinas, one of the greatest doctors of the church, and in fact, one also of the great minds of the Catholic Church when it comes to theology. He wrote in a very systematic and a very thematic way. This is St. Thomas Aquinas. While St. Augustine wrote on topics, on many topics, no? so more than one topic in one work. Foremost example is his autobiography, The Confessions. No? So maybe siguro alam nyo na one of the greatest uh, writings of St. Augustine is of course his autobiography, which is The Confessions, where he included also psychology, spirituality, there are also parts which are, uh, we can say, biblical commentary and philosophy intertwined into his language of autobiography in The Confessions. So we cannot just say that it is uh, more on uh, his life, but we can uh, also read there a lot of insights from these different fields that St. Augustine was in, into in, uh, during this time or during his uh, time. As we take these two important preconditions, my dear brothers and sisters, in dealing with his works, we also take note that last, the last factor that affected his culture of writing is his person in relation to the academic prowess as a rhetor or a speaker remember saint augustine was a rhetor you know? so he likes or he was uh, educated in liberal arts and that is why uh, at first he was a rhetor it's like a lawyer no in the present uh, day set up but uh, um, more more or less it's like a, a public orator a speaker no one who convinced no that's that's saint augustine so saint augustine grew in a span of time when the fluctuation of the pagan and Christian surge, uh, surges met. No? He was raised by a mother who was a, uh, a good Christian, but his father's ambition shaped him to be or to the human glory of rhetoric. That is according to Confessions uh, chapter 2, verse 4. St. Augustine's training and exposure to pagan, so pagan ang kanyang background, even though that uh, his mother was Christian, St. Monica was a Christian, but predominantly pagan uh, background si St. Augustine. No? So his exposure to pagan thought and literature were very helpful to the development not only in speaking but as well in his writing. Yet I find it personally profound that the very depths of all these enticements, as St. Augustine himself put it, he said, truth was thrusting itself upon me, staring me face to face. Confessions chapter 4, 15, 24. So St. Augustine had undergone the training beyond the pressure of his family, especially of his father, but his hunger for truth, no? yung kanyang uhaw at uh, gutom na naramdaman niya sa kanyang sarili at puso, yung nag-intay uh, uh, sa kanya, no? na, yung nag, nag uh, uh, invited him, persuaded him. No? The truth itself led him to write in search and discover the truth that continues to appeal to him. As of the present, we have also to adjust to the limitations of the availability of uh, St. Augustine's works. In spite of the size contrasted by chances of discovering new ones, we can consolidate the works and categorize them loosely as they are also diverse in themes or topics. So, yung obstacle kasi when we want to thematize or categorize St. Augustine's work, parang masyadong mahirap, it's because, as I have said, of these preconditions. So, hence, in this survey, in this talk that I am giving you, I propose that we will make this presentation generally by themes in order for us to capture comprehensively his works. In this presentation, I will lar largely use the original presentation of a, a Jesuit author, Eugene Portali, 
in his book, he made a very comprehensive categories of St. Augustine's works. I contributed a little adjustment by simplifying the presentation and supplemented with other sources whenever it is possible. Dates will just be given in every work presented under the category. Moreover, we will also take some examples of the works of St. Augustine in every category, and I will just prepare a detailed list for the works presented by Portali and by other sources which I can give you uh, through uh, PDF. So we will go to our categories. What are the categories by which St. Augustine have written or have uh, developed his uh, great or the manum opus no, of, the, uh, of uh, the works or writings that he had? Of course, number one, we have to consider the autobiograph uh, autobiography and the correspondence. Autobiography, of course, that his confessions, that's the only one. And then, of course, the correspondence or the correspondences are the letters. Number two, philosophy and liberal arts. Number three, we have polemics and apologetics. Under polemics and apologetics, we have two important um, uh, uh, a kind of uh, category, subcategories, which are first against unbelievers, and then second against the heretics. Under against the heretics, we have Manichaeism or works against Manichaeism, then works against Donatism, and then works against Pelagianism, and then works against Arianism. Later, I will um, develop this and I will explain it to you what are these things. No, Maybe some of you, um, it's the first time for you who heard, heard of it or if you have heard it but you have uh, little inkling about these things. No? Okay, so we will continue. Uh, the, the fourth one, of course, is the scriptural exegesis. And then, number five, we have dogmatic and moral expositions. And then, number six, are his lost works. So, what, uh, uh, whatever is the theme or the category, uh, but uh, they are considered as, um, in, in one uh, category, as lost works because, of course, uh, evidently, they are, they are lost right now. We do not have a copy of these books. And then, of course, the last, as, uh, the last um, category will be the apocryphal works. Okay? <clears throat> so now, we will have the descriptions and the categories of these Augustinian writings, and we will take up these representative works. First, as I have said, we have the autobiography and the correspondence, correspondence or correspondences. Obviously, under this category includes the most famous of his works, as I have said a while ago, his autobiography, The Confessions. It was written uh, uh, around year 400, so sometime 30 years before St. Augustine died. This has been acclaimed as the most famous spiritual classic and, mind you, second only to the Holy Bible uh, in its fame. It has been consistently known as famous not only in one period, but indeed it has endured because of Augustine's piercing language which are humanly in touch, in, uh, uh, in touch to the real experience of the man throughout. Next we have, of course, uh, under uh, these things, uh, the, this uh, category, we have this another work, the Retractationes or what we call the revisions, written about uh, 426 until 427, and even some scholars would say that it is until 428 or two years before his death. Uh, Retractationes is included under the category as it becomes a kind of a guidebook on the works of the Bishop of Hippo. So it's a very good work or a very good book. It's because it guides us to the rest of his works. No? And that is why we can also say that um, outside of what uh, had given to us by, by uh, Posidius of Calama, this Retractationes is like a kind of uh, a guidebook for uh, the list that he has, uh, that, that he, that, uh, the list of his book that he uh, has no? or had. Retractationes does not mean revocations. Because uh, maybe we can say retractationes means the retractations, mean, which means I revoke 
or I deny, no? Yun ang ibig sabihin kasi nun eh, no? It does not mean revocations of St. Augustine's in his writing. He does not, uh, he did not write in this book that uh, he deny that he wrote something about that, 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 that uh, certain works before, no? Hindi ganun. However, it is a book that allows us to be guided by explanations, justifications, or updating. That's the very important thing. Updating of the words, phrases, and thoughts used in the many of his works. No? So, retractations or retractationes is like a roadmap to his works or even like a helpful explanatory footnote making us faithfully understanding his thoughts in his writings. So, it's very important to note, my dear brothers and sisters, because when you are um, reading St. Augustine's work and then you don't have the retractaciones or retractaciones, you will not understand his language. You cannot understand the use of his words because St. Augustine is a very good uh, rhetor and writer that sometimes he coined, no? he coined the uh, words and sometimes he even make use of pun, P-U-N, pun, no? or a kind of a a uh, rhythm no that uh, will convey us a very deep meaning of what he is teaching or what he was teaching uh, that within his works so next we have the correspondences or the letters included in it are about 270 letters no the 270 letters of them but the actual number of his letters is just 253 taking out of course we have to take out the letters which are addressed to him so that's why it's correspondence because he, there is a correspondent no the, there is the addressee of the letter and sometimes augustine is being addressed no or was being addressed for some queries or questions about theology and some other things the letters are very varied in forms some take like already a, like like a treatise no it's a kind of a work also no so it's just not a letter but it is a kind of a big work within a letter so his letter is uh, for example a longer treatment of a certain topic that it becomes like um, a kind of a long essay no uh, like that no and some uh, some of this example of the example of this is of course the letter the famous letter to proba which discusses Augustine's explanation on prayer. So, later in your familiarization, you will, you will, um, in one way, connect and associate some letters into some important themes in the Augustinian spirituality. Others uh, are letters which became classic uh, to foundation of religious life. Like, for example, his letter to one one, which is a letter uh, about. Augustine's reprimanding, he as a bishop, reprimanding a troublesome community of religious women. So he, he made uh, some um, uh, reprimand, it, which means, no, uh, uh, siguro sinabihan niya ng uh, akuan, no? sinabihan niya ng mga warnings. No? No? Her sister, known in the legendary history as Perpetua, no? it's not a true name, it's just, just a legend, uh, Perpetua was once a superior of that said community. No? His letters had uh, addressed or responded other famous Christian writers as well. No? So may mga correspondence to St. Augustine at the time which are also known in the Christian history and of course known as uh, holy persons uh, themselves. No? So like St. Jerome and St. Paulinus of Nola. No? So these letters are very important because as they are response to religious queries and controversies at the time, it helped us to follow the development of their thoughts through their replies to these questions. The classic categorization within the collection of these letters allow us to plot that these were written starting uh, from his ascent to the Episcopal throne of Hippo something or sometime in 396 until his death in 430. So this is the span of time where these letters are being exchanged to their addressee, to St. Augustine, or from St. Augustine to their addressee. Next, my dear brothers and sisters, um, under the category of, we will uh, treat the category of philosophy and liberal arts. So St. Augustine also wrote something about philosophy and liberal arts. And uh, as you know, uh, our... Um, 
training as uh, seminarians before also include in our uh, curriculum the philosophy of St. Augustine. So St. Augustine has a great contribution as well in philosophy or philosophical thinking and philosophical speculations which is more on Christian philosophy. So the Augustinian philosophical writings are the fruits of his what we call, so to say, Cassisiacum Dialogue. What is this? No? These are the philosophical, uh, these, are, uh, these uh, re uh, writings are philosophical in nature because as has been, he has uh, said that these are supposed to be the meditative fruits of his dialoguing with his friends in Cassisiacum. Cassisiacum is a place in Milan where he prepares for his baptism. So during more or less, no? maybe not more than one year or less than even one year from 386 during the time of his conversion and eventually in 387 during the Holy Saturday when he was uh, baptized as Christian. So this was the span of time wherein the philosophical works were written. The language is very elegant, uh, language of, the, of these works, no? and comparable to the classics of Roman literature because of the immediacy of his experience before his conversion. He said he deplorably wrote this as if he is writing as a secular uh, literature with full of pride. No? You know, just at the time, this, at this time, St. Augustine has just or had just uh, experienced his um, conversion to Christianity. So in one way, meron pang na, natira na mga na, na pride sa kanya no? as a teacher and, you know, as a person full of um, uh, pride as a rector. No? So the famous, uh, one of the famous, the most famous of the works of St. Augustine in this category is what we call the triumvirate of three important works. Of course, triumvirate means three. And these are Contra Academicus, Tibiata Vita, and then the Ordine. Contra Academicus, on the one hand, is an investigation of knowledge which should be attained by the soul in order to be happy. So nonetheless, the search for truth, my dear brothers and sisters, which St. Augustine is um, uh, pursuing philosophically, which is undoubtedly attainable, is against the academics. No? So contra academicus means against the academics. That maintains these academics or those people who are deemed in the academe, uh, maybe uh, people who are learned, no? these are the academicos or the acad academics, they maintain that it is impossible to be, uh, impossible that knowledge be rich and hence everything should be held in skepticism. So everything should be held in doubt. That's why St. Augustine refuted them because uh, there are things that we cannot know, not because that they cannot be known but the most important thing is that we have to persistently search for it because we will be helped by the grace of God. So that's uh, the point precisely of St. Augustine. Second is the Dibiata Vita. And this is in English on the happy life. Uh, Dibiata Vita is the meditation on the soul's search for a happy life from the wretched pleasure of earthly uh, uh, until the blessed life with God. So this is a a treatment on the search of God that will make you happy, that will will make you blessed. So from the happiness which are just uh, earthly happiness that gives us only pleasure, but eventually uh, mawala yan, no? St. Augustine is pursuing a kind of a search no, of a happy life which is with God, and we call it the blessed life. So the blessedness of life is the real happy life for St. Augustine. So, and lastly, we have the de ordine. And the de ordine, in English, it's on order. No, It is all just about the question of evil in the order of God's providential plan. So, uh, we were talking about happy life, but there, we also understand that there are, um, there are also um, appearances of evil, no? of evil in our lives, such as bad things, bad events. No? So, St. Augustine treated them. So if you want to, to understand the meditation of St. Augustine about the existence of evil, philosophically, you go to the ordine. Next, my dear brothers and sisters, we go now to the polemics and the apologetics. 
In this category, St. Augustine surfaced as a controversialist. It means a person who knows how to strategize in the question of controversy or in the question of some debatable uh, matters. At this point of time, debatable matters which concerns our religion, the Christ uh, Christianity, the, the Catholicism. No? So most of his life was a staunch defender of faith and a masterful orator and writer who through his intelligence proved that most of the spurious religious views at the time, those false teachings at the times, siguro nakita ninyo, ngayon maraming mga false teachings that are fighting or arguing about uh, about us or against us. At the time of St. Augustine, there were also these spurious or what we call uh, false teachings or teachers that uh, uh, peddle into us uh, things which, uh, so to say, the truth about God, the truth about religion, etc., etc. So, as a controversialist, moreover, is not already a surprise. As a bishop, St. Augustine no, is expected to defend his flock from the lurking wolves that snatch unsuspecting sheep. So he has to be a controversialist. He has to write something in defense of our faith because no, people who are teaching or were teaching at the time things which are not true are snatching his flock to become uh, a follower of that certain uh, belief or system of belief at that time. So first we have to treat uh, under this category of polemics and apologetics uh, are the works against the unbelievers. So these are pagans. No? These are not necessarily Christians because later we will go to Christ against those spurious Christian uh, teachers. No? So against unbelievers or pagans, pole uh, polemical works and apologetics address to unbelievers, we call it uh, in the classic uh, language, infidels, no? are act actively attacking the Catholic Church at the time during the time of Augustine. The unbelievers refer referred to referred in this category were those pagans who sought to destroy through debates in the new Christian movement, which is Christianity. One of the important works under this category against um, Unbelievers is, of course, the classic and monumental work of St. Augustine, the City of God. No? So this is the monumental and considered as well as the best of the works of St. Augustine and is the obvious representative of the polemic, uh, polemical works against unbelieving uh, or unbelievers uh, of Christianity. It was written uh, intermittently or intim uh, intermittently between the years 413 to 426. So it was treated for a long time because St. Augustine has to stop and then has to do some other works, then he has to continue, then he has to stop again. So uh, that's why the City of God, aside that it's very, very complicated and monumental as a work, it has also to uh, be stalled because St. Augustine has also to uh, uh, do some uh, other works. No? That's why it... Uh, uh, it has a very long uh, progeny. The main content of this work is to disprove that Christianity is uh, not the reason of the fall of the Roman Empire. As Christians at that time of St. Augustine were still blamed for the unfortunate fate of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire at the time which is pagan or which was pagan, no? uh, it was uh, toppled by other forces and the Romans or those who are under Ro Roman Empire uh, blame it to Christians no? and that is why the city of God was born then we go now to under the heretics so these are believing Christians they are not pagans they are believing Christians but they believe in part or totally against the mainstream Catholicism or mainstream teachings of the Catholic Church. So under this category are the different polemics and the apologetic, apologetical works of St. Augustine written to combat the heresies of his time, especially his one's religion, of course, the Manichaeism, and two more, the Donatism and then the Pelagianism. And he has also, uh, not that uh, much, but he had made or written some important works against Arianism as well. So we go now to the Manichaeism. 
Manichaeism is a concocted Christian sect, no? So it's a Christianity which like a, a kind of a collage, no? Uh, a concast, concocted Christian sect with mythical doctrines that creation is governed by two principles. For uh, Manichae, uh, for the Manichaeans, no, there are there are two gods, the good god and the bad god, no? So matter, matter, the matter, the body, the, the flesh that we have, because of these two, uh, two uh, the teachings of the two gods, matter is of the evil god's creation. So the world that we have for the Manichaeans is made of an evil god, no? Well, the spiritual fear of a sphere, I mean, is uh, of course the angels, the souls, no, is of the good God. No? So, because of this, he addressed uh, many writings, such as the writings such as the Contra Faustum, written in 400, the Libero Arbitrio in 388, and then De Natura Boni in 405. Next, we will treat now uh, works uh, within or below uh, Donatism. And what is Donatism? Donatism is a Christian heretical movement that maintains controversial stance against readmittance of members of the church who are called backsliders. No? So for Donatis, ang mga Donatista, these are Christians but they are particular Christians following the certain teachings of Donatus, no? the name of uh, that uh, certain priest, actually he's a priest, uh, Donatus. And for Donatis, the church should insist only of clean members of the church that brought problem to the concept of the sacrament as efficacious in itself as Jesus guarantees it even if the minister, the one who is giving or the one who is administering the um, sacrament is a sinful person because they believe that they, they, uh, 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 they believe that um, uh, the priest should be clean also uh, wala, walang sala walang bahid ng kasalanan para uh, mabigay niya ng effectively ang sakramento pero kay St. Augustine kasi hindi pwede yan kasi hindi naman sa cleanliness ng pari nang gagaling yung grasya na ibinibigay ng Diyos but God uses only the sinful priest as the channel of His grace the grace is still effective no? so yan ang uh, konsepto ng donatism na Niri refute ni Saint Augustine on this uh, or under these uh, pol uh, polemics and apologetics. Uh, more moreover, uh, their point of view of view trashes out sinful members away the, uh, of the church, and famous of the works of Saint Augustine under uh, this uh, category are Psalms against the Donatists, uh, written around three hundred ninety three until three hundred ninety six. Then there is a work on baptism against the Donatis, worked or written during the uh, year 400. And then the pastoral letter uh, given by St. Augustine to all Catholics in his diocese against the Donatis, written in 402. Then another major heresy combated by St. Augustine was Pelagianism. Uh, what are what uh, is this Pelagianism? Who are the Pelagianists? No? Or the Pelagians? The Pelagians, sorry. Uh, this uh, heretical group maintained an error of putting human effort as the foremost source of salvation. So, uh, uh, kabaliktaran ng mga donatis when the donatis cannot maintain uh, a sinful person inside the church, ang mga Pelagians naman are saying that we can attain salvation by our good works. No, So, God... Walang, walang part si God sa good works na ginagawa natin because we can we can do something good even apart from God so that's the that's how Pelagians would uh, view uh, about salvation so this had put grace in disgrace no so ang gracia parang na disgracia since it will only be bestowed to man by God in relation to the human capacity which is totally free uh, to attain goodness even outside of God's assistance. So Augustinian writings also bound abound in the in this category since it is in this part Saint Augustine will develop the theology of grace no which is very important later in our discussion some of the most notable works are De Gracia Christi et De Peccato Originali uh, written around 418 and then De Nuptiis et uh, Concupiscentia in 419 Contra Julianum in 421 and then De Pres 
predestinazione sanctorum and the dono preserva uh, preserven sorry it's the dono preservan preservance it's the dono preservan preservance the dono preservance then lastly oh, we have the arianism arianism on the one hand no was a heresy that denies the divinity of Jesus Christ. So, if you can recall a certain sect nowadays that uh, denies the divinity of Jesus Christ, uh, there was also a group of people, Christians, who denied the divinity of Jesus Christ and they were called Arians, no? Arianism, because the teacher of this false teaching was Arius. No? So, we have two works dedicated in it against an Arian sermon written in 418. And then the conference with Maximus, which is a proceeding of the debate between St. Augustine and a certain Maximus who is an Arian or who was an Arian. And then the refutation of Augustine against Maximus's statement in the conference against Maximus written in 428. Next, we have spiritual exegesis. 